I'm off to Ruddington on the trail of a genius who owed all his inventing prowess to falling in love. The Industrial Revolution. What do you think of? Great steam engines. Ironworks. Giant ships that ruled the waves. Oi, you. Yes, you. Back of the class, pay attention. Bet you're not expecting this next innovation. And stockings. Who'd have thought? The Industrial Revolution began around 1750, and in the hundred years that followed, there was an unprecedented explosion of new technological inventions. Hundreds of thousands of miles of roads, railways and canals were built, and factories and mills sprung up all across the nation. By 1815, Britain had the most powerful empire in the world. The Industrial Revolution changed the world forever. But what you may not know is that it started with a Tudor love story in Nottingham. Unbelievably, 150 years before the Industrial Revolution was in full throttle, one man built a machine. The world's first machine. People hadn't even heard of machines in the 16th century. This was a completely crazy concept. Ooh, I've come to a nice. typical knitting workshop of the time to meet Industrial Revolution expert Rebecca Wood, who's going to tell me all about the country Casanova with an obsession for stocking. So uh, this is our 1850s workshop. This is as uh, close as we can imagine this space would have looked around the time that it was uh, most commercially active. The technology that inspired these machines actually goes back far further, all the way back to 1589. 1589, so just after the Spanish Armada, that's incredible. In the 16th century, the majority of us were struggling to make some cash from farming, not busy building machines. So tell me the story. The Reverend William Lee, who was a curate of a village called Calverton, just outside Nottingham, was enamoured of a lady who spent far more time on her hand knitting than paying him affection. Yeah. So he was very upset by this. So you fancy the pants off a lady who's clearly playing hard to get. She's using her knitting as a pretty poor excuse not to see you. The problem is you're so completely smitten that you have to do something. But what? Well, naturally, you'd go and invent an amazing knitting machine. The first in the world. That ought to do it. Surely she'll be impressed by that. She'll never have to knit again. This was a serious bit of kit. He'd studied the movement of the knitting needles and replicated them on a giant scale. Essentially, the Reverend had invented mass production. But was the object of his desire impressed? Unfortunately not. The story goes that it had taken him so long to invent the thing that she'd cast him aside. Not a man to give up on his pursuit of female approval, he simply aimed higher, to none other than the Queen of England herself. He was looking for a royal patent to start up his business. He eventually managed to get an audience with Queen Elizabeth I, and it's recorded that nothing exceeded her disappointment more than seeing these stockings. Elizabeth wanted to protect the livelihoods of the thousands of hand knitters throughout her kingdom who would be put out of work by this revolutionary device. The Queen sent him packing, and William devoted the rest of his life to improving his machine and winning her approval, but to no avail. It's said that he died of a broken heart, and as a result, he never saw the recognition for the work that he'd created. Broken-hearted by this point, not because of this woman he'd made it for in the no. first place, but because of the machine. Because he, all the passion that he'd, in, he'd put into developing this machine eventually led to nothing. Poor William had been spurned not once, but twice. And the only thing that stuck with him through thick and thin was his beloved machine. He may have died penniless and alone, but his extraordinary creation lived on. The stocking frame was the start of mechanisation, which over 150 years later directly led to the Industrial Revolution. The basic design remained untouched, but it was fine-tuned over the years. 
iron strengthened the needles, it could knit intricate patterns and produced finer cloth. By the 1850s, it had evolved into the machine Rebecca has here today. The hand knitting industry just couldn't compete with the speed at which the knitting machine could produce knitted fabric. Well, it does look extraordinarily complex. Well, it is a combination of both hand and foot pedals that operate the mechanisms of the knitting carriage. Um, so I can knit you a few rows if you'd Please like. Please do, yeah. So that is just three rows of knitting. And if you can imagine going at that sort of speed for 14 hours a day, it would be a very physically demanding job. William's knitting frame went on to create untold wealth for Britain, shaping the whole future of Nottinghamshire's cloth-making industry. It all stems back from that first initial idea um, of William Lee's. And he did it all for love. All for love. Amazing that they can still be made in the traditional way. And amazing too that the whole story started with one man's obsession that led him to great innovation.